Hey guys, hopefully you're having a fantastic day because I sure am. I'm a bit tired, but I have something to say. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe because it means a lot to me. Anyway, today I'm gonna be talking about a topic I really like about and that's three ways how you can make money in the booming esports market. And of course, if you have not noticed already, the cash flow in esport industry is real and it's growing fast. So prize pools in tournaments are getting bigger for every year as more viewers and sponsors are attracted, which is definitely true. Every year there's more and more players coming into esports and it's becoming quite a profitable niche. And that's what I really wanted to discuss in this video. Not only can you sell merch, but you can also host games and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go all through that in this video. What was once seen as a hobby has now become a serious career and one can pay really well for the fortunate few. Um, about 10 years ago you couldn't make shit from this, but uh, playing now as a professional esport player you can make a lot of money. Um, now players are far from you know being to you living luxurious lifestyles unless you're like in the top tier which usually does not happen. But uh, you know, it seems like a dream job, but it really isn't because I know a few people in the industry and it's a lot more work than people think. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna play videos all day, but it also becomes quite a hassle. Especially for me when I had my Fortnite channel, I literally got paid to play Fortnite and I got bored for, of it. Now, the first thing you need to do is you can start your own stream and host esports games. So, of course, you're gonna need permission from actual, you know, games like pro teams or the organizers, especially to host these games or to just talk about esports, which is completely legal, which I am doing because I'm really interested in the topic. That's why I'm uploading daily videos. But one of today's most obvious income resources or sources uh, within esports is made through media channels like streaming on Twitch, which uh, is really nice. You can get paid for casting, but casting requires a lot of work, you know, effort and stuff like that. And at the start, you don't even get paid. What you do get is a lot of viewers, though. If you cast a few games, you can easily get up to 150 viewers. And sure, some of those will be either followers or donations. Now, you can also build, you know, your own brand, your own niche, stuff like that. Anything you like, basically. The next thing you can do is, if you really know a lot about games, which the thing is, I really like talking about this topic, is esport betting. So I have my own link on esport betting down in the description below if you want to start betting on esports. The only warning I would like to do is, well, you should really consider about these games because they aren't that easy as you think. You need to know every single team, every single team member, how they play and stuff like that because it takes a lot of effort, sure. But if you're really good at esport betting, you can make a lot of money. If you bet it really good, you can make thousands, you can even make, you know, off an income, which I wouldn't recommend because you can get addicted. But if you make your call in life, you must know everything about every player, every map, you know, team's best map, worst maps, and that's for every single map. Um, it's no exceptions. Um, don't even bet on tier five and tier four games. It's not even worth it. And also a uh, list of, you know, new esports betting sites are increasing. So. That's definitely an opportunity to think of. If you have like $5,000, you can also make your own. Actually, that's a bit low because you need your own gambling license. But that's, that's when you get a lot of money from betting. Basically, betting is a good way to make money if you know how to bet. You can go from $1,000 from $1, to $100,000 or you can go from $10 to back to zero dollars. Everything can happen, but um, you really need to know the odds who are the underdogs. Um, and also be careful of some insider trolls. That's something I would definitely recommend. The next thing you can really do is join anything in eSports jobs. So if for example, not only do you join, you know, as a caster, but you can also join in as a player, which is really hard. But there's also a lot of other opportunities, such as being the cameraman for eSports games, or, you know, being, you know, an analyst for these eSports teams. There's a lot of probably eSports countries that actually need and want analysts and someone that is very recognizable about the game and some pay pretty well, to be honest. Now, you do need a portfolio for that, some experience, 
um, I have my own portfolio, so I usually, you know, uh, either get a reply back or get accepted into these kind of jobs if I do apply sometimes. All through, in my country, there's not a lot of eSport themes. Um, but that's definitely one way to make money. You can also make it as a cameraman, you know, everything about eSports is evolving at a rapid rate. And um, it's really much easier than you think. The only thing is you usually have to be older than 18 or legal age to actually start working in these jobs because, well, they usually don't accept teenagers. Sorry about that, but if you're a teenager, well, the best thing you should do is just do something that entertains you, try to make, you know, money out of it, and um, it will definitely improve your life. And the next thing is, such as a cameraman, they're always looking for new people to record, stuff like that, and just a lot of eSport pay, you can also become a pretty good investor in eSport companies. So if you feel you don't have the talent to host eSport games and be, you know, the best of the best in eSport or be the best host or the best cameraman or something like that, you can become the rain man of eSport and you still have options. So, you know, just investing in eSport teams is going to be pretty expensive to start, but can make you a lot of money or you can just lose your investment. It can go actually both ways. So let the money do the work. Becoming an eSport investor requires some capital from your end, but you call your call always start small and work your way up. So let's say you start your own eSports team for a $5,000. And what happens then is this team gets pretty good. It wins a few tournaments. And that's when the sponsors come in. And most of the pay for the eSport teams are the actual sponsors, which is uh, basically a best, the best way to actually make all that money. For example, Astralis got paid 75,000 just to have the Audi sponsor. And I think that's just amazing. So when investing in eSports, if you're study which these companies are gonna jump in on the wagon by investing in their stocks. So you can either buy their stocks or you can buy your own esports team, which I think is pretty epic. And um, well, you have to be a legal age of here, but I think everyone in the esports is in the legal age already. Just let me fix on that. And um, there's really a lot of ways to make money, but I think the best way is actually betting. And why is betting? Well, betting on the other hand requires no big investments such as more than a thousand dollars but requires a big time investment so what i like doing is watching a lot of these hltv or csgo games and you know watching them on twitch and then learning a lot about these teams these teams changed fast you know they changed teams and stuff like that but if you keep watching these games they keep up to the pace and you remember every eSport team, which one is bad, which one is gonna win. You can basically expect some teams to win without the proper upset. And that's when the money start peering in because you usually don't lose a bet. You start from, you know, let's say you start $10, you go to a few thousand, and then from a few thousand, you can, you know, pay a rent or something or just buy food or you can invest in other things uh, such as a gym membership. And then actually, you know, get some pretty decent payroll going for you you know so 800 dollars bets will become pretty easy just be careful you don't get addicted though because that is something you don't want to do um but seriously though esport betting is one of the best things you can do and also becoming an esport pro player is gonna be pretty hard why is that because you have to be really good at the game so that requires some talent then you have to have some, you know, magnificent time skills. So, for example, if you're in college and you want to go pro in esports, it's going to be really hard. But if you have no job at all and um, you're a loser, <laughs> then you can definitely, you know, just do anything esports related and become a pro. Who knows? But it's going to take at least two years, you know, to even get a good paycheck because these esports teams are not paying that much as you think. Yes, the top tier teams are paying 40k a month per player, but that's because they were working and grinding their way up and they also had a lot of luck, a lot of good skills and a lot of other capabilities that basically prove their points. 
and I think there's a huge problem of you know Fortnite kids trying and thinking they will get you know a, into a Fortnite team or some duo gods or something like that and they expect them to pay a few thousand dollars to play for you know some random I don't know restaurant or something and I think that's retarded and well I guess some people never learn because well there's always gonna be some kids trying to go pro and out of these thousand kids trying to go pro only one of them is gonna succeed and that my friends is the bitter truth so either it's eSport betting or eSport jobs and if you have a lot of time go for those eSport games anyway you know what to do I have another video up here and if you enjoy more of these videos be sure to hit that like button and this is Fatman signed out peace guys